Hi, I'm Maurice Jones, founder and president of Graceland Ministries, and we're here to do part two on racism and minorities. Um, Graceland Ministries is not set up to deal with things like that. We, we don't want to deal with issues like that, but we have to deal with it because we can see that the church is not as strong as we thought the church was in defending the faith and teaching and training individuals. So we have to step in temporarily and try to help out the church and then we can go back to doing what we do at Graceland Ministries. So anyway, part two on racism and minorities. And the, the what we want to stress here is that there's something called, as we mentioned in the other video, the square of opposition. And we have to keep this square of opposition in mind when we're dealing with things. For example, the topic of Black Lives Matter. You know, why is it that Graceland Ministries is not going around saying that Black Lives Matter? Well, the reason for that is because the term Black Lives Matter is on a square of opposition. It's a statement, but on that square of opposition, it's not a universal affirmative. So when people say all lives matter, they're making like a universal statement. Okay, when someone says, you know, no life matters, they're making a universal negative statement. But the best uh, Black Lives Matters can be is a particular affirmative statement. So don't expect everyone to believe in it because the statement itself is limited to a particular affirmative. It's not making a universal affirmation. It's making something that's unique uh, in its affirmation. So if, let's say, a Christian person says, all lives matter. A black or an African American Christian shouldn't get upset, okay, with that statement because that statement is just on that square of opposition, a universal affirmative. He's supposed to say that. That's logical, okay? Because technically, either either all lives matter or all lives do not matter, okay? So when someone says all lives matter, they're not saying or they're not coming against you. It's just that it's logical to say that all lives uh, matter is a universal uh, affirmation. It's not something that's down here. So don't get offended if someone uh, claims that uh, all lives matter, okay? Now, the second thing we need to deal with is most people know about worldviews. Most people know about a worldview, but they don't know about a methodology. Okay. Your methodology is what you use to determine whether something is true. And so we at Graceland Ministries, not only do we know that Black Lives Matter is not a universal affirmative statement, okay, but at the same time, it's a cosmic humanist statement, okay, as far as worldviews are concerned. But as far as methodologies are concerned, uh, it's what we call a pantheistic statement. So the statement Black Lives Matter uh, really is not a theistic statement. It's not totally theistic. So when you have preachers out there defending that statement, they're really defending some form of cosmic humanism. I'm going to explain that to you in a moment. So, you know, you got African Americans out there that are uh, a part of, you know, these cosmic humanist belief systems. You got African Americans out there who call themselves Christians, but they're believing in the Apocrypha or the Pseudepigrapha or they're believing in the Moors view or they're believing in, you know, Black Islam or something like that. Just because someone confesses Christ and goes to your church doesn't mean that they are believing in the things that you have in your doctrinal statement. That's why our Graceland Ministries was formed. We tried to go, we tried to go into churches to help them with their doctrinal statements because we know a lot of people sit in church and they, you know, say one thing, but in their hearts, they believe, you know, in things that are not of the Lord. So what is a methodology? First of all, you get four of them. A methodology is designed to tell you what is true. The first methodology is deism. 
okay? The second methodology is atheism. Think about it. Deism, they believe in God, okay? And he's a God that creates the world. He winds it up, let, he lets the world go. He doesn't perform any miracles within the world. He's just the creator of the world. So to a deist, he believes in God, but his God doesn't come into the world and, and perform miracles. The universe is not open to him. The universe is closed to him. Then you have, of course, the atheistic methodology, okay? Um, John Paul Sartre, not Sartre, John Paul Sartre said, life is an empty bubble on a sea of nothingness, <laughs> okay? And, and, and that's his methodology. So if you were to tell John Paul Sartre, Sartre that um, black lives matter, <laughs> he would say to you, hey, <laughs> to you and me, but to me, no. So you have deism, you have atheism, and then you have what we call pantheism. Pantheism is the belief that all is God and God is all. Now, pantheism is uh, different from what we call Taoism. Taoism is the idea that, you know, you have a little bit of good and evil, a little bit of evil and good. You know, you got the circle with little dots in it. That's Taoism, okay? Spelled with a T. Uh, but pantheism is just the little yin-yang. You know, you got the world and you got God. God is all, all is God. You know, it's just a, what we call uh, pantheism in the sense that pantheism and, and atheism, pantheism and atheism are, are like the same, it's like the, uh, two different perspectives on the same coin. That's two different sides on the same coin, okay? Now, your fourth view is called pan-en-theism. That's P-A-N-E-N, okay? That was invented by uh, a guy by the name of Alfred North Whitehead, okay? So Whitehead viewpoint is that his son was killed in a war and he could not believe in a God that uh, would kill his son. He couldn't believe in a God of the deep. You, you know what I'm saying? We'll let this happen, okay? Well, actually he didn't re react against the God of the deep. He, he really reacted against the God of Christianity because for him, he did not believe in the idea of omnipotence, the idea that God has all power. So he came up with panentheism to say that God shares his power with his creation. So now you have deism, you have atheism on a square of opposition, you got pantheism, and you have uh, uh, panentheism, okay? So now you have these different methodologies. Now Christianity is not on that scale of opposition. It's something I want you guys to understand out there, okay? For example, let's take Calvinism for example. John Calvin is a reformer. If you teach Calvinism to an unbeliever, He's going to see it as pantheism. He's not going to understand it the way a Christian would understand it, the way a Calvinist would understand it, the way John MacArthur would understand it. So if a Calvinist were to go out there and, and preach the gospel, then the unbeliever would say, you know what, this sounds like pantheism. That's what happened to Oprah. Oprah, Oprah was sitting in church and someone, she came over with a question about, you know, what happens to the heathen? And I'm quite sure someone must have given her a, you know, Calvinistic answer because she moved right to cosmic humanism. Okay? Same thing with Thomism. Thomism, uh, Thomas Aquinas has always been accused of being a deist by people. Okay? Because these methodologies are not uh, a part of Christianity. And so they work. Calvinism, for example, works within a church. Thomism works within a church. Arminianism works within inside the church. But to the unbeliever, they only hear deism, atheism, pantheism, panentheism. That's why we make sure when we're giving the gospel, we make sure that we're not giving out a square of opposition. Okay? I know this is kind of confusing for you, but you know, you can't simplify things too much because you end up lying. Okay? So sometimes you're going to have to go back and do some research on your own. Okay? Lastly, I want to talk about is, uh, relative to Black Lives Matter, is the idea that there are four, what we call four meanings to life, okay? And you have what we call the temporal purpose view of life, okay? They're the nihilists, okay? Then you have the imminent purpose view of life, and then you have what we call the uh, transcendental purpose of life, and then of course you have what we call the cosmic purpose of life. But don't confuse this with cosmic humanism. So most Christians believe in a cosmic 
view of life. We believe in God. We believe in moral absolutes. We believe in values. That's called the cosmic view. So we believe that life has value because there are moral absolutes. The other three views don't believe in that idea. So yeah, let's use an example. Let's say you're, a, you're an African-American, you have on a t-shirt, Black Lives Matter, okay? And you walk into a restaurant and you, you see another guy there who believes in the temporal purpose view. He might have a, a t-shirt that says nihilism. You know, I would rather commit suicide than live. You see, you're asking the world, you're telling the world, I should say, that black lives matter, but you're telling it to people that don't even believe that their own lives matter. Okay, they're evolutionists. They believe in the idea of a big bang, bam. First law, boom, 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 four laws, bam. Single cell amoeba, bam. You know, life, you know, apes, you know, to humans. We might as well walk around to some people, they can walk around with a sign saying, or, or something written on their chest, you know, all monkeys' lives matter. So as Christians, sometimes we forget that everybody doesn't understand what we're trying to say and you have to take time to talk to them. All we want to do is say things like, okay, all lives matter. That's, that's not going to help you at all to try to convey to someone that believes that black lives matter. All you're doing is putting yourself on a square of opposition. So we at Graceland Ministries, uh, we hope this will help you to be able to explain things and uh, present the gospel at the same time. So thank you. Thank you for listening to this video from Graceland Ministries. If you enjoyed this content and are interested in hearing more on this topic or other matters of biblical doctrine, please visit our website or follow us on social media. Thank you.